Hi, welcome back to Spirit Lounge. Yeah, my mic is on. Um, hope you guys are doing really well. Uh, so this is the uh, next um, instalment of the Nagamadi texts, and we're going through another chapter. So this is the second one this week. Um, but to get another one in this week to try to get through the book uh, quickly, because I'd like to move on to uh, another religious text, maybe the Up Upanishads or maybe the um, uh, the King James Bible or something next. <clears throat> to go through that and try to interpret it in a different way or rather my way uh, into what I see and sense from from what it really says so uh, without further ado we'll just put the uh, PowerPoint onto the screen and move myself into the corner okay <clears throat> so uh, the, this uh, section is the dialogue of the saviour so again it's um, it's a dialogue with uh, Judith, Matthew and Mary I believe, uh, pre um, uh, the Saviour leaving the earth plane. So in other words, it's probably pre-crucifixion, in other words. <coughs> and so um, it goes through a dialogue. And what it does, it's uh, composed in Greek as much of the Nagamadi was, and then it's uh, translated into Coptic. Um, because again, this one is very poorly preserved, so there wasn't... Um, a lot of the sentences were fragmented. So there wasn't much you could get fully from it. I think it was probably about 30% of it was difficult to, trans to, to get anything from, and the other 70% was whole, was whole sentences are reconstructed by the authors. The compil it's a compilation of different sources. It's inter to intertwined, so it doesn't look like it's from one single dialogue source. It's a monologue, as I said, from G to Jesus before leaving the world. Um, it was... Anticipated to be around circa 100 AD, uh, it was um, this dialogue was transcribed, so therefore it must have come, might, it may have come from different places. It also talks about the archons again, um, and it has some traditional sayings from Jesus in in this text. So um, it's a mix between Gnostic and Orthodox Christianity or early Christianity at the time. Uh, and it also mentions uh, it does not mention the myth of Sophia. Or, the, or talks about the demiurge, but the fact it talks about the archons, you can you can in, insinuate that uh, the demiurge was somewhere in the background there. But um, um, we'll uh, we'll actually also says that the world is presented as a creation of forethought of the source itself, and not an error of creation from Sophia. So let's let's go straight into this. Hopefully this should be short as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so the first one, the Saviour teaches about rest. Of course, we know what rest is by now. It's um, when you find grace in yourself and, and you're touching the, the, the realm of the divine, which is where you, you uh, attain comfort and that pleroma, which is the wearing the garments of the divine, uh, becoming that spirit that you sense and have discovered within. Uh, Saviour said, now the time has come, brothers and sisters, for us to leave our labour behind and stand at rest. A labour behind, it's not, not work. The labour is the uh, is uh, the uh, the energy spent to discover oneself. So when it says labour, it's not talking about physical work. It's talking about the labour of finding oneself. For whoever stands at rest would rest forever. Always rise above, do not be afraid. Anger is frightening. Anger established rulers over them. I opened a path, the way of passage for those who are chosen. So if what he's saying, if we move into anger, we move into fear, we move into those frequencies, then we move ourselves really into the lower uh, chakra energies that we have. Um, the lower vibration, lower lokas, lower serpent energies that people describe them, move into the material, which is where the archons and so forth. Um, the, it's negative energy, in other words, it's dense energy, it's dense vibration, it's materialism. Um, and those who are chosen are those who effectively choose themselves through realignment with their own internal spiritual power. And then the next chapter is a follow-on of a prayer. I didn't write that here. Uh, it's uh, giving praise to the Father is an actual prayer. Um, and it's, and you, we've heard it before because it's similar to some of the previous uh, chapters we've gone through. So there's a lot of repetition. The next chapter was overcoming the power of darkness. At the time of destruction, which is death, means destruction means uh, destruction of the ego, the material self, 
and also the rediscovery of spirit, which is the, the destruction of the, uh, the false self. And also the destruction here is talks about death, i.e. Leaving, leaving the material realm. The first power of darkness will come upon you. Do not be afraid. In truth, fear is the power of darkness. It will overwhelm you. Rather, look at what is within, since you have mastered every word on earth. Take you to a place where there is no dominion. Make what is inside you and what is outside you a single one. Crossing is frightening. Without hesitation, pass by. Sleep not the children. So what, what is this saying? What This is talking about what happens to... This is a question I believe Mary asked in the text. And it was talking about what happens to us when we die. And this is talking about what I've touched on in some other videos, which not with Alan Nagamadi. It's talk. It's what you've what we have attached ourselves to and the indoctrinated belief systems that we have will could guide us into an illusionary realm post leaving the body we could be maneuvered into other realms but not the realm that we think and we seek in our hearts to be if we're if we think, for example, we're going to hell because we've done such bad things and we have that such intrinsically within us because it's been battered into us, the realm of fire and brimstone, um, of darkness or, or whatever you, whatever it is that you believe is the afterlife or you hold so dearly, this is the kind of the, the illusion that you will, be, you'll be, you'll, you will recreate yourself, actually. Because your consciousness upon leaving still is there. Your, your consciousness, if it's so strong, will be there. And you will be, what it says here, the fear is the power of darkness. It will overwhelm you. Rather look at within uh, and go to a place of no dominion. You could take yourself to an alternative, alternate illusion, albeit um, what would seem for an eternity. But in the realm of the infinite, there is no time. So it could be a, a momentary lapse. Um, the key here is to understand what the true realm is, what the true divine force is, and leave all the indoctrination, the theology, the religion, the uh, the, sh the the closeted beliefs or the boxed beliefs that we have aside, because it could take you to uh, an illusionary place that you believe is uh, the divine realm. Okay, the Saviour and his disciples discuss the inner life. Uh, Matthew said, How? The Saviour says, If you do not keep what is within you in order, your work will remain and draw back into the material. Exactly what we're talking about, reincarnation. What this means is draw back into material. Your work will remain. This means that uh, what Jesus is saying here, if you do not maintain your path towards the Spirit, are you you do not keep what is within in order it it's the it's the faith and the continual persistent pursuit of greater knowing that is keeping your within in order if you do not then you will keep this passage this realization this work this um, uh, path that we're on unfulfilled on incomplete incomplete and therefore you could be drawn back into material because you have not finished uh, the path back to the divine whilst in the realm of ignorance, which is uh, the realm of the physical. Judas, uh, Master, understand. Uh, he wants. I understand. I want to understand the works of the souls. The Master said, "They do not die and are not destroyed. They have not known their companions, and the one one who will receive them. For truth seeks the wise and the righteous." The lamp of the body is the mind. So that is the lamp of the body is the mind. What does this mean? It's not the illumination. The illumination is the spirit and the heart. It's the processor. It's the one that gives you, uh, the, the mind is the one that translates and helps you understand what is being driven to you and guided to you through the spirit and the heart. And therefore it's the illuminator from a mental sense. The illuminator of knowledge is actually from the spirit and the heart. What is within you is kept in order. Your bodies are enlightened. As long as your hearts are dark, your light, which you expect, is far from you. Again, drawing dark down into the lower chakras. Fear will always 
draw you towards error, misjudgment, misdirection, um, uh, away from wisdom and choices that are not for your greater good. Your light, which you, the, your light, which you expect, is far from you. I am about to depart. My word, uh, and I, it's gonna, I leave my word among yourselves. So this was before Jesus was about to leave. Uh, who seeks, who reveals? Disciples, who seeks and who reveals? Master said. So the disciple, uh, disciples asked, who seeks and who reveals? The master said, one who seeks also reveals. Of course, if you seek the spirit, then you reveal the truth unto yourself. One who speaks also listens. Speaks to the oneself, speaks to the divine, will also listen for the messages that come. And one who sees, one, and one who sees also reveals. So if you see, you seek, you see and receive knowledge, you speak to that which is in, that which is unknown, known within, then you listen to the words and then you see the, uh, the reality for yourself and then reveal it to others. Mary, where do my tears come from? My laughter come from? Master said, the, bo the body weeps because of its works and what remains to be done. So what it's saying here, she cries from because she is saddened, not for material reasons. It's for spiritual reasons. And therefore, he's saying that the, she cries because she doesn't fully yet understand and hasn't uh, fulfilled it sufficient of the path that she, the spiritual path she is on, and therefore she weeps. She says, he says, mind laughs the fruits of the spirit. Whoever does not stand in darkness will not be able to see light. Uh, you will put on light. I, light is the uncovering of the spirit. Okay. The creation of the world. Uh, Judas asks, what existed before heaven and earth, Master? The Master responds, there was darkness and water and spirit upon water. So the water is, it goes back to um, baptism. So, there was darkness and water. So darkness is not the negativity of darkness. Uh, the realm of the infinite and all possibility is actual darkness, but not in a negative sense. It's a darkness of pure love. It's a realm where there's nothing visible. You're just present in it. And it exhibits pure love. And when you're there, you are belonging. It's home. You are everywhere. You're not a point. You are an expression all over. You can express yourself as a point, but you are all that is within that realm of all possibility. And you and we create through thought from an infinite realm where there is nothing, just presence within the divine frequency. We create experience we create environment we create expression we create incarnative incarnational experiences through our thought we direct ourselves so this is saying the darkness and the water water is the water of creation the manifestation of life this is what uh, it's referred to as water water above so remember the demiurge looked above through the water and saw the image and therefore modeled the image of adam into the image that he thought he thought he was seeing it was seeing um, which was actually Sophia looking down at what had been created in her era, in other words, a part of his storyline. Um, that is the water. It's the water of creation. So manifestation, light and creation was the water above, but also there was water below because that was the realm of uh, error below. So that was a long explanation there. I hope that was, uh, hope you resonated with that. There was darkness and water and spirit upon water. Spirit is manifestation. A divine force inquire about within you mystery of the spirit wickedness entered in order to destroy the mind matthew where is the soul where does the true mind dwell the master said fire of spirit came into existence the same to be spirit and the true mind within them within them establish the soul on high be exalted uh, this set paragraph was really fragmented that's why it's short uh, what it's actually saying is that wickedness entered in order to destroy the mind. Wickedness is our own. Wickedness is not something that some demons or archons have forced upon us. 
We create wickedness ourselves. How? Through free will. We have the will to direct our force, our spiritual force, either suppress it and go into the ego and the mind and the personal ego and the intellectual self and the material self and the lower chakra energies and create wickedness ourselves. And we have done, obviously, in uh, abundance in our realm and therefore created duality. Duality is, a is an outcome of all possibility. It's an outcome of us creating that through free will actions, work, thoughts and intentions. And that's what this is trying to say. We create wickedness and therefore it, cre it destroys the mind. The mind is in a, is, was attached to the heart and the spirit. We have detached the mind as the superior force and we detached it from the heart and the spirit. In fact, the spirit has been depressed within us to the lowest recesses of our being where it's just a pilot light when it should be a fire. So where is the soul and the true mind dwell? It's the f and fire of spirit came into existence, i.e. the force of spirit. And also the fire of spirit is also the fire of desire. So there's the fire of love, there's the, and there's the fire of the water of love, and then there's the fire, so fire and water, the uh, yin-yang. Uh, the fire is the desire, the water is the light, the spirit of love, the fire is the, is the force of desire, materialism, ego, and all those other expressions. And we can choose. We don't have we, have, we have these two forces within us, not because we have them. It's because we form them. And we need to decide which way we, we, want to, we want to exist. The fire will keep you recycling into these realms. The water will direct you towards grace. Um, Okay, let's move on from that. Um, seek, find, rejoice. This is again very short, it's fragmented. More useful than your work, remove from yourselves what can pursue you, a way to overcome the powers above and below. Let one renounce and repent, seek and find, rejoice. So this effect we say, remove from yourself what can pursue you. That's our um, uh, desire-driven aspect. Remember, there's nothing in error with experiencing life and wanting material uh, comfort. There's nothing wrong with abundance. There's nothing wrong with creating abundance. It's your attachment to it. It's your desire to it. There's nothing wrong with uh, a physical affection between two peoples. Or however you choose, consenting individuals. Um, but it's your desire to it. It's your attachment to it. It's your lustful desire to it, which becomes and dominates you. And how you use those things, how you use wealth and money, how you use property and accumulation. Are, you, are, you, are we, are we um, obsessed with accumulation? These, it's balance. And if we are driven through water, then we do these things with balance. If we are driven through fire, we do these things to excess, compulsion and obsession and attachment and this is the difference so remove yourselves what can pursue you is the fire and the water again um, and uh, we can find a way to overcome the powers above and below which means um, this, this is talking about the, uh, the upper frequencies of grace and low frequencies of that but we also have those remember we have those in our chakras the upper frequencies what are those well we should be balancing all our chakra energies but the frequencies of desire our solar plexus below, right? The sacral chakras and the chakras below. The, ob the ones above are the heart, the throat, the third eye, the crown. Those are the things that take you towards. When we, when we move to more towards that, we would balance vibration throughout. We, mo we move more towards this direction and that's where we receive the grace. Um, the emergence of the word, okay, so the master said, Father, uh, f the master said, Father established the world. So this is slightly different from the rest of the storyline in this book, where Sophia, the Demiurge, created Demiurge and the Demiurge, the Sakla, the Alder Dep, Belbeof, was supposed to have created the physical realm. Uh, Father establishes, established the word. He collected some of its water, and the word creative process came from it. So he created the, the, the water is spiritual force, creative force, the, uh, the divine through its own creative force, which is called water, 
spirit, spirit energy, the divine force, is a creative force, and therefore the, the world and the universe manifested from that creative force of the Father. And I assign line to this, which is just thought. The divine put an expression out of thought. Remember, the, da the darkness is, is there because nothing exists physically in it. But it's pure love, pure manifestation, pure thought, pure expression, pure consciousness. And from that, expresses form, transform, transformation, creation and destruction through the forces of un the universal forces, of, of karmic forces, of cause and effect, energy, the transformation of energy through thought and tendency, and then we manifest those things. And those are cascade on force. Those forces move continually through uh, this universe, transforming energy. It's just cascading out. Uh, and that's what this is, and this is what I, I, I don't um, uh, uh, sign up to this demiurge. An archontic. Um, the archontic forces do exist, but we've manifested those into into, into manifestation ourselves, but also our, our other physical beings in this universal realm that we live in. Um, okay, so where were we? Uh, Father said, established the world. He collected some of its water, came and uh, the creative force came from it. It experienced it experienced man uh, some trouble. Uh, it was more exalted than the path of the stars around the entire earth. Period of time began. Man of beings separated from the rest. The word was established. He looked down. The father said, go, send something from yourself. Not to be in want from generation to generation. So sent fountains of milk, honey, oil, wine, fruit. The word is above. Outside was great light. For that one rules over all the realms above and below. So what does this say? Um, this is essentially talking about um, the solar system, in other words. So this is the Earth moving around the sun and the other planetary forces, the astro astrology of the, of the stars the formulations and the constellations and the movement of planets. Remember um, in previous chapters, the angels and the archangels and the lords and these things were all names for the constellations the days the hours uh, and the months uh, of the year and the cycles of um, the cycles of how long it takes the earth to revolve around the sun uh, and th therefore time began time was began to be measured as it says path of stars around the entire earth period of time began what this is saying is that time was manifest once man looked above and saw the revolution of the, the, the us around the earth or they were then thinking the, earth, the sun moved around the earth but either way the time they manifested 360 days rather than 365 12 months 360 days um, uh, hours and therefore time was then created in those forms hours minutes and so forth 24 hours in a day 60 minutes in an hour all that was transformed down by first me me measuring the movements of the celestial above that's where time manifest from originally uh, and obviously it's progressed since then and we hold ourselves to linear time linear time is what we created to measure our linear experiences of events that we experience in life and one thing after another after another sequential events but in the divine there is no time uh, it's important to understand that uh, it says go send something from yourself it's more biblical where um, the earth was populated with fountains of milk honey abundance so therefore the generations to generation didn't uh, have uh, go without in other words Okay, the Saviour and his disciples discussed the place of life. Mary asks, where to store these questions you ask of the Son of Humanity? So um, Mary is basically asking the teachings that are being passed on in the life of Jesus and others, where do they store them? The Master says, someone who has a place to store them in the heart. Exactly. We are, religion was a formation of man, was never an intention. Books... Uh, which in which we revolt, which 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 we um, 
concentrate our faiths on and religious religions on were not meant to be. Uh, as you can see from the Nagamadi, all of these texts here have come from many, many different sources. Some of them uh, not descriptive, not known, uh, pulled together and now create scriptures. But they're all fragmented, telling the same story over and over again in some ways. And they call, and then some, some look at these scriptures and follow them to the letter like a religion. The Bible is the same. It's stories from many different places, many different authors, many different sources. Uh, but the word of the divine passed through the avatars throughout infinite life on this planet needs to be stored in the heart and cascaded out from you to another, not just through word, but through actions, thoughts, intentions. Okay, such a person can leave the wor world. When you have it in your heart and you evolve it, this is saying can leave the world. It goes back to the reincarnation cycle. Jesus is saying you can leave the world when you evolve and know a grace in its true, true nature uh, and not held back in this world of poverty. That doesn't mean that we stay here because we all pass on, we all die and this phys the physical body gives up eventually or rather we, the spirit decides to leave or through ill treatment of the body, the body will die before the spirit's ready to leave uh, because we haven't looked after the physical. We can end life before our time if we don't look after the physical. Remember, it's free will. Um, held back in this world of po poverty for me just means you'll come back into this world of poverty means poverty of the spirit lack of the divine within the human experience not poverty material nothing in these texts or bible or anything else you read is material it always speaks of the spirit I always translate things words you see and read as spiritual meanings not material material money meanings first and foremost Matthew asked there is no wickedness but only pure light Master says you will not be able to see it as long as you wear flesh everyone who has known oneself has seen oneself person has come to resemble that place in goodness as long as you wear flesh yes we will not know the trueness of pure light while in body it's not possible you won't even understand that we won't even understand the true force of our spirit because the true core of our force cannot be contained in body a fractal of it exists in here our true source our true link the thread that golden light of thread to our core is always with the divine that is where true our true force exists we can detach ourselves from it not physically but through through our will and we can direct the avatars of ourselves in all sorts of experience the trick is to come here and to maintain the expression of our core, to become that core, which is your spirit within. And so when you wear flesh, yeah, we're not going to know this force. We're not going to truly understand it while in body, but we're not meant to. What we're meant to understand is come as close to as we possibly can to express that force while we're in body. Because to truly understand that force of the spirit, it's a, it's a, we have to be in an energetic form because the spirit is pure energy. We cannot express the pure energy of consciousness in a body, in the shell, but we are to expand sufficiently away from the realm that we experience so that we um, move into greater realms and towards grace itself. That is the purpose of life, actually, why we incursively come back and forth into life. Everyone has known oneself will see oneself. Person has come to resemble that place in goodness. We've, we've mentioned that. Next one. How does an earthquake shake? So uh, this is a question that was asked. The master says, earthquake shake when it shakes the earth. Master picked up a stone. What supports the earth is also what supports heaven. Earth does not move. If it did, it would collapse so that the first word might not fail. Word established the world. All you children of humanity, all the things that do not move, you live in the hearts of those who speaks out in joy and truth. World comes from the Father's body among people and do not receive it. It will return back to its place. Again, the last sentence is talking about if you do not receive the spirit or find it, you recursively come back into this, into this realm. 
it's not very clear what he means by the stone, but effectively what he's talking about, uh, what shakes the earth. Uh, the spiritual force shakes the earth. Um, and he's talking about um, if the spiritual force uh, shook the earth, it would collapse. And that is also spoken of before. So if, if when, the spirit, when we all achieve our spiritual power, this realm of duality will no longer exist and therefore it would collapse. And the first word might not fail. Well, that means that we've all, the, the expectation is and the uh, understanding is at some point in eternity, eternal existence of this universe, everything will return back to its spiritual vibration from its original, to its original vibration. Therefore, the word, the first word is source, will not fail. It cannot fail. It's, it's inevitability. It just depends how long we wish to take to do that. But it will happen. It's inevitable. In the end, all things return back to their source. Okay, um, you live in the hearts of those who speaks out in joy and truth. What comes from the Father of body, um, what, what comes from the Father's body among people and did not receive it, it will return back to its place. Okay, coming to understanding the next, next section. One who does not stand in, uh, darkness cannot see, cannot, cannot stand in, darkness cannot see the light, does not understand how fire came to be bought, came to be will burn, um, not first understand, water knows nothing. What use is there for such a person to be baptized? Understand how wind blows, blow it or blow away with it. How will someone who does not know the sun? know the father things hidden from not know the root so uh this essentially is it's saying that of course we've got to understand the spirit the father our root um if we don't understand the water we don't understand the divine or the divine creation or water or the spirit which is water um then they don't know anything is there is there is there uh is there any meaning in having a person person baptized in that case that's what it's saying. If you stand in darkness, you cannot see light. Uh, this is saying that if we, because we stand in the, in a realm of duality, we also experience darkness. And it's saying that if we didn't see that darkness, we wouldn't know the difference between that and the light. We wouldn't know which direction in which to go. It kind of indicates that uh, remember, duality is always was an imp was a is an infinite possibility but it's always an expected outcome um, when you manif when the divine manifested life in this universe including ourselves uh, in these physical bodies or the spirit entering these physical bodies there was also a possibility that we would there's meant much of us or many of us will go in and out of um, lower chakra frequencies and stay there therefore create duality it was inevitability and expectation but there's an inevitability and expectation we will return back to grace also. It's a cycle. It's a yugic cycle, uh, which I will go through uh, shortly. I think I might uh, go through that once uh, I've reached halfway through the book, which won't be too far now, um, to, to go through those cycles. Uh, it'll explain a lot. Okay, uh, the next one. Judas, Judas Matthew and Mary have an apocalyptic, apocalyptic vision. Judas, who can ascend to such height or descend to the abyss? Uh, the word issued. The seed from a power was deficient and it descended to earth's abyss. Word brought the seed up to the, into the presence of the majesty so the first word might not be lost. Like a visible flash of thunder and lightning, what is good would be taken up to the light. Um, this is talking about a seed. Uh, we are all seed. Uh, and we descend into the abyss if we go towards what is deficient in other words we will be brought up into the majesty of the word if we choose to go to that direction Mary asks about the vision I don't think that's talking about the demiage by the way this drop into the deficiency into the abyss I don't think that's referring to the demiage but it could also be uh, Mary asks about the vision Mary said, I see the devil that affects people from the start when, when they dwell with each other. Her question is talking about with each other. 
is when uh, those who uh, are um, drawn towards lower energetic vibrational tendency and frequency go towards each other and dwell with each other, don't, don't, they tend not to move on from that frequency. Uh, Master said they will not stay there. When you see the one who exists eternally, that is the great vision. Do your best to save what can come after and seek it and speak through it. Maybe, maybe harmony with you, uh, truly the living God is in you. So eventually, yes, they will not stay there, but cyclically, many, many, many lifetimes, they will stay there until they make the free will decision to move towards light or water, as in this chapter describes. Okay, next, Judas asks the rulers of the world and the garments. Judas, I really want to learn everything. Master said, the living God does not dwell in this entire region of deficiency. Actually does, but I'll explain why later. All things that exist, what, uh, this is a different meaning to that, by the way. All things that exist, what remains, you rule over them. Judas, but look, the rulers are over us. Master says, you will rule over them when you remove jealousy from yourselves, clothe yourselves in light. Garments of life were given to those people because they know the way they will go. Okay. The God does not dwell in the entire region of deficiency. Well, actually, the entire realm of all is within the all and is within grace itself. So, does, um, does everything exist within source? Yes. What it means is that God does not dwell in the entire region of deficiency. It means the realms of the deficiency means those of the material desire driven, as we mentioned, lower vibrational frequency, which there are many, the, the, the satanic, the lustful, or excessively thought. We've talked about the this tendencies. Um, they have depressed the spirit. And if you depress the spirit, therefore, you God, the, the realm or the frequency of God or the divine doesn't exist within you. Therefore, as a metaphorical way, we can say it, has no, it doesn't live in the realm of deficiency. It doesn't. It exists there for sure because we, the divine light can never be extinguished from anything. But it can never see um, the light of day, if you pardon the pun, because those of that tendency will not allow that. And when you remove jealousy from yourself, again, lower frequencies, you close yourselves in light. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. Garments. garments is effectively the, the force of light. Uh, you will know the way to go. Okay. Uh, next is uh, the disciples ask about fullness and deficiency, life and death. Uh, disciples, what is fullness and deficiency, they ask. Uh, Master says, you are the fullness. You are from fullness. Yes. And you are in a place of deficiency. A bit of both. When what moves a person slips away, that person will be called dead. And what and what it is lives, what is living leaves what is dead. It is it will be called alive. Effectively, what moves a person slips away? It's talking about the spirit. What moves a person? Remember, Adam was animated through the the breath of Sophia which is the spiritual light of grace, our spirit. The essence that leaves this body and this body dies. The thing that animates it, otherwise it'll just roll, wriggle around on the floor, it won't even be able to move. What animates this is your spirit. No matter how healthy you are, if your spirit decides it's, it's time to go, this body will just die. It will cease to animate, therefore die. Obviously, physical medical contraptions can keep the physical body there, but there will be nothing in it you will be gone from it. Um, okay, and then they, uh, what sips away, and then the, per and the person will call dead in a spiritual sense. And what living leaves, uh, and what is living leaves what is dead, it will be called alive. In other words, the spirit either comes in and, 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 and uh, uh, it becomes alive and, and moves away from what is dead, i.e. the spiritual-less person. Uh, whatever is from truth does not die. Mary, Mary, why have I come to this place, Master? Master says, you show the abundance of the one who reveals. In other words, to spread the message. That when you leave behind what cannot accompany you, then you will rest. So her, pa her passage is also to understand the divine. 
but also to reveal it to others, the abundance of the one to others. Okay, Mary and the other disciples discuss true life with the master. Seeks life, master saying this, uh, seek, seeks life, this is their wealth. World, the world is false, gold and silver. So the wealth is the spirit, not the material gold and silver. Be ready in every circumstance. Blessed are they who have found, they have not killed, not have been killed. This doesn't mean material murder or anything. It means those have not been killed, i.e. the spirit has not been suppressed within them and they have not suppressed it themselves within them, i.e. that's what it means by killed and not being killed. Emer emerge victorious, love and goodness. This is effectively saying duality and what we experience in the life today, particularly brutally today, is darkness. It doesn't have force. It doesn't have power at all. It has power because we give it power. It has has. Uh, those that we've given our governance to and um, express darkness to in their actions, words, thoughts and intentions at this time have come out to be seen. They have that power because we give it to them. When we express light, they have no power because we take that, their, that light away from them <coughs> by no longer giving them our power. And that's what this is saying. We will rule over them in the previous section. We will, if we wish to. If this is something that we wish to create on this earth in our human experiences. If not, then what we experience now will continue. I stand in the place you can reach. The rulers and the administrators, and this is where it mentions archons, have garments that are given only for a while and do not last again. Uh, the rulers and administrations in our physical realm again there's demonic forces that do that we created ourselves that do create you worship the darkness remember all dualities or possibility we can manifest any kind of form any energy expression we wish if you feed it enough energy the infinite will it will manifest from the infinite because we've uh, because that's what we want those who wish to do that we can manifest it worship it, feed it with ritual and sacrifice and satanic practices. This is what our cons, our cons are. Uh, they're manifestations of our own uh, abstraction and uh, loss. And then their, their energy and frequency can take over the behaviours and tendencies of a person. And that's what this is saying. The garments are only given temporarily. Well, because we give it to them. It can be taken away in a heartbeat when we choose not to. Um, children of truth not to clothe with these garments so that's the, we are the children of truth and we can choose not to clothe with these garments which are the wickedness of the uh, our contact frequencies okay that seems to be the end of that chapter um, I appreciate you guys are listening and again the second coming we've talked about this a number of times the salvation is our own please when you follow this path as much as possible we're not here to be perfect we're always going to make we're always going to have some error in in some way or another in our behaviors we're not here to be perfect no one on this earth plane has ever been perfect no avatar in the past present no future will be perfect but we're here to expand as far away from this realm as possible spiritually and that's what we're here to become. And that is the second coming power, is that force individually and when combined collectively will overcome all things, all expressions in this world. And we'll turn it around into a divine paradise it was at the beginning. Okay, I thank you so much for that. And again, uh, if there's any uh, assistance anybody would need, uh, Please contact me if you're if, uh, offering any, any spiritual coaching for free uh, around this topic or anything else. Uh, email me on Gmail or Facebook Messenger. Happy to engage with you guys on that. So uh, let's move the webcam in. And I just want to say thanks again for, for listening to this uh, video uh, and anyone else who is who may be listening to it live. Um, it doesn't look like there is. Uh, but um, thanks again. I hope you enjoy it. Well, there's more to come. We're not uh, halfway through this book yet. 
but we'll try to get through it as quick as possible and move on to something new. And we'll try to split it up with some other videos as well um, to uh, just uh, change things up a little bit. So thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. And I say God bless to you all and take care.